One blustery morning, my friend Olivia, who's another solo sailor, and I set out to sail to the Mescaline Islands of Vanuatu. The Mescalines are famous for their prolific wild dugong population. As a land tourist, it's necessary to book a boat from a nearby island to go hunting for these beasties, but as cruisers we have the advantage of taking our homes with us. We planned on anchoring up near one of the villages and asking the local fishermen where the dugongs liked to hang out. Once we had a handle on where to go, we loaded up into Olivia's dinghy and started Mission Dugong. Dugongs were once hunted in Vanuatu, but they are now protected and their population is beginning to come back. Dugongs are actually more closely related to elephants than they are to other marine mammals. They are found in warm, shallow water where seagrass grows. At first we jumped in and saw nothing but the current gently swirling on the surface. And then, suddenly, out from the deep, dark shapes began to form. Soon a whole group was curiously swimming around us. Seeing them in person, freediving with them, staring into their wrinkled little eyes, feeling the water currents from the swish of their tails was magical and captivating. We had to drag ourselves out of the water, our brains still ringing from the encounter. After we got out of the water, we motored over to Gek, and Olivia helped me get over to where she had her boat, Juniper, tied up in a mooring in water far too deep for anchoring. We planned to tie my boat behind Juniper. Since we only had sink line, I tied a series of float onto the umbilical cords connecting our boats together so the line wouldn't sink and get wrapped around prop, keel, or rudder. Holly and I are tying our boats together. We're sharing a mooring. Oh yeah. So we're floating the line between us. Olivia motored over to the beach to make sure with the locals that it was okay if we used the mooring. We ended up trading a night on the mooring for a bit of dinghy gas. The next day, we sailed 40 miles up the coast to Crab Bay. On Navionics, this whole bay is marked as uncharted. However, open a satellite chart and you'll see a beautiful bay riddled with large coral reefs. Using only the satellite maps as our guide, we navigated our boats around the reefs and found the anchorage to be mill pond flat and quite beautiful. There we met up with Uhuru, the boat Dan works on, and had a wonderful beach fire that night on the deserted beach. Something about the Pacific that I've learned to enjoy is the ability to choose your own adventure with anchorages. Many of them aren't charted or reviewed. Satellite maps become your best friend, and a keen sense of adventure leads to some amazing experiences. Crab is also a marine park, and the fish and underwater life we saw was unparalleled compared to the anywhere else I've been freediving in Vanuatu. Today, glorious day, I'm sailing to Luganville. So it's a 47 mile sail. I got up at sunrise and got underway. 
but it's a beautiful downwind sail. I'm wing and wing, I'm going about five knots. There's a gentle breeze, full sail, sunny blue skies. This is just a really amazing day and I'm really happy. I'm really excited to get freshies and to do a little bit of reprovisioning. It's been about two and a half, three weeks since I've been in a town and had an opportunity to get veg. I've just traded with locals that I meet in the little villages for whatever they have growing in their gardens. So I'm lying in the shade slash sun, uh, reading my book, listening to music, drinking tea, and just enjoying this beautiful sail. You know, not every sail is great, but the great ones are really special. I'll be in Luganville for a couple days and then Dan gets three weeks off from Uhuru and he's gonna join me and we're basically going to cruise looking for places where we can kite and places we can surf. The first three, no, the first five days of his time off it's gonna be blowing 25 to 35. Unfortunately he doesn't get off before that wind kicks in so we're probably gonna be doing some pretty gnarly sailing to get somewhere where we can set ourselves up to kite. <laughs> Normally this would be the time that we'd be setting ourselves up but um, somehow I feel like with two people in my boat I'm a lot more invincible. I'm used to doing everything alone. Once you add another person in to help it just changes everything in a really positive way and the weather is fickle it always changes so you never know but I am really excited for those three weeks and hopefully getting a lot of sports in because I've been sitting for way too long. <laughs> Coming into this um, little protected area, it's, I think what it is is that these islands around me, there and there, are kind of the tops of this mountain ridge, because looking at the depth, it's just all over the place, so I think I'm sailing over topography, although underwater we call it bathymetry. <laughs> but I love thinking about um, the concept of my boat kind of floating across a mountain range, which is kind of what it's doing, uh, these buried mountain ranges. It's cool. Um, I'm getting closer. The swell is down because it's protected by the barrier islands. Today's just been one of these magical days of sailing. It was a 47 mile day, which I was concerned about making it in before sunset because you only get about 11 hours of daylight right now. Um, and I left a little later than I intended, but I sort of uh, turned my alarm off this morning. And um, I don't know, it was just a great day. I probably averaged four and a half to five knots, so I'm making the 47 miles no problem. And mellow seas, full sail, wing and wing, lying in the cockpit, reading my book, just, I don't know. I've had a couple days of not so great sails uh, the past week but this one just makes it all worth it. That's sailing, isn't it? Okay, I just got into the anchorage and discovered that if I want to get my laundry done, it's the kind of laundry where you have to drop it off, which is really common for countries like this. They don't let you do it on your own. Uh, I need to do it in the next 15 minutes. Ah! So I'm not gonna be able to put away my sails. Maybe, hopefully I'll be able to wash myself, hopefully for them, because uh, I smell terrible. And I'm just really hurriedly getting all my laundry. Yeah, that's right, I do the sniff check, what of it? So anyway, I'm gonna go, peace out, cool anchorage, I'll go pro more later. Dan has his three weeks off starting today, so the first thing we're doing is we upped anchor together and now he's zooming over with the Jerry's to Uhuru to fill them with water, which is really awesome. Um, so that we'll be all set for our three weeks together. I'm just kind of slowly going in idle forward, it's only a mile to get across. Um, and there's a pretty big blow coming starting around noon. It's gonna start blowing in the high 20s. So we need to get out of this anchorage, which is pretty bad. It was a horrible night of sleep last night. There was, <laughs> I mean, it's one and a half miles of fetch and it was probably blowing 20. And then also there's a swell rolling in from the side. Uh, so neither of us slept very well last night, but um, the next anchorage that we're heading to, it's only about 13 miles around the corner and it looks really protected. So. Um, we just want to get there to sit out the blow and do some kiting. <laughs> uh, every single day it's going to be blowing in the 20s and 30s, which is awesome kiting weather. So we're really excited to kind of get the boat set up and then just play for a couple days. We arrived in the anchorage a couple hours ago, put away the whole boat, and now we're just enjoying the sunset. 
and it's really flat here, probably flatter than, I don't know, maybe even flatter than crab. And super nice breeze, our friends are here. We're gonna stay here a couple days, hopefully get some kiting in. Dan saw dugong in the water, which is very cool. Here's the anchorage. So we're just having some wine, courtesy of New Zealand. We hit the jackpot on this. Kiwis are gonna know what I'm talking about. The clear skins, basically, it's a gamble in a bottle. You never know what you're gonna get in this particular bottle. And I bought a bunch in a row from the same shelf and they're amazingly tasty. Um, so thanks New Zealand for continuing to surprise and delight me. But we've just spent a week in this anchorage waiting for the weather to turn. It's just been horrible, cloudy, rainy, really strong winds gusting 25 to 30 in the anchorage. Um, but finally the sun is back, the winds dropped a bit, so we're going to sail. It's about 80 miles against the wind, so more like oh, a lot more than that, because um, we have to tack. Back down to the Mescalins, where I dove with the dugongs, and we're gonna hopefully do some kiting there. So we've got the whole boat ready, upping the anchor, and we're gonna take off for a passage. represents how fucking truly awful it is. It never does. Well, if you're not feeling seasick, why don't you try and look through a GoPro at all? <laughs> Well, the wind has filled in and we are sailing close hauls, not quite making our tack, but I'm hoping that the wind slowly shifts over the next 24 hours and we kind of curl around, otherwise we'll have to do a tack that adds almost 20 miles to the total trip. It's pretty snotty out here, cloudy, um, not really fun, <laughs> but it's not too long of a passage and we should be in by tomorrow afternoon, so um, we're just kind of dealing with it and hoping it'll be over soon. Well, now it's raining. Still pretty nasty. Just to uh, change the head sail to the little guy because it suddenly just increased by about 10 knots in about five minutes. It was really intense. We were super overpowered and then almost overpowered even with the double reefed main and the working jib but then it, it dropped off again, but now this is pretty much um, where the boat wants to be. Just big sloppy seas, not really able to do a whole lot. So just made some ramen, listening to a podcast is kind of it. It's just a nasty sail, but we should get in tomorrow and then it'll all be worth it because we can kite in the next spot where we're going. It's our second evening. And we're just coming up on the pass. It's been a roller coaster of sail changes, wind changes, rain, squalls, zero knots, 30 knots. Um, really exhausting 36 hours, but we're almost in. Just coming back in the same pass I left out of to get out of here. I have the current with and the wind is pretty light, so I think it should be a pretty simple pass entrance. And then we're just kind of racing the sunset to get into the anchorage. But the one we've chosen is called Gaspard Bay, and there are some large pieces of coral in the way. But um, Navionics seems pretty accurate, and we're going to just go for it.
we're coming into this little mangrovey bay. It's really cool. It kind of bends around in the shape of an L. We can see bats flying overhead. Um, there's mangroves and then these drippy trees with vines. It's so beautiful in here. And after the hellacious sail we've had, it just feels like I've been at sea for years <laughs> and I'm finally seeing land for the first time. All right, we're moving anchorages. Last night we just tucked into the mangroves one because it was sunset and it's a really protected flat anchorage. But today we're in surf of search or kite, in search of surf or kite. Uh, so we're going to this anchorage by the reef and we're just gonna see what's up. Are we gonna pull out? Yeah. Oh, there's one of those boats with the tan bark sails or whatever. Off of them a race. <laughs> oh, the halyard is there. That's fine. Like, this is really nice. <laughs> it just ripped the deck fitting out. Stand. <laughs> <laughs> Dan was like, why is the sail not going up? <laughs> the halyard was attached. Alright. <laughs> Public shaming. No, I won't put that in. I will. Well, we're waiting for the wind to fill in because there's not quite enough wind for kiting and there's not quite enough wind for surfing. So my watch <clears throat> has this little piece basically I noticed the other day it's mostly come off um, and you know it's got some epoxy stains on the front and some scratches and it's not a smart watch but it is the only one I have and I like to use it when I'm at sea so I know uh, what time to wake up and I don't know I'm just fine when I watch most people do so anyway <laughs> I'm fixing it by I have a sailing needle and this is my sailing <laughs> slash embroidery bag uh, and I have some of this twine and I'm just going to reattach this little clippy end onto it. I was once asked by a woman what my watch does and confusingly responded, well, it tells the time. She then looked at it and exclaimed that it would be the perfect gift for her six-year-old for his birthday as he loves telling time. So if you're wondering if I'm fancy and advanced, the answer is yes. The other thing I'm going to do while I have my sewing stuff out is make some new sail ties. So these ones are getting really old and frayed. Super annoying to do them up. And the other end is really frayed too. And it's just been a pain in the neck for a long time. So I have this roll of webbing. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do is measure out the length, cut it, and then just sew a loop in the end. And that's pretty much all you need for a sail tie. It's really easy. One of the biggest lessons I've learned since starting to cruise in these remote places is that I actually am able to create way more than society may lead me to believe. Like especially as an American and a capitalist society, we're taught that when something breaks you buy a new thing, but the truth is that you can make your own things and fix the things that are broken. And I love feeling like I have a little bit more control over my life and the things in it uh, than just my money. Uh, my skills count for something as well. Okay, here we have brand new sail tie, so I just did a little square stitch around the loop and then burned both the ends and this one is going to replace <laughs> this sad limp one. And I have one other one like this I'm going to replace so I'm just going to do the exact same thing. And you can get, I think I got this webbing through sail right, but it's just, I think it's one inch, just your basic old ye old ye webbing. And it's so much cheaper. I don't even know where you, can you buy sail ties? I don't even know. But anyway, you can make your own now. Thanks for watching this week's video. Before you guys take off, I just wanted to say I've tacked on to the end a little, um, I don't know, like a sample of Olivia's YouTube channel. So Olivia is the other solo sailor that you see in this video and she has her own channel and Instagram account. Uh, and I just wanted to share that with you guys because I think it's really fun to see different ways. Like we're both doing the same route. We're both sailing solo on small boats, but we have very different styles and we get along really well. 
and I think if you guys like what I'm doing you might like what she's doing and anyway it's really fun to just see all the different ways of living life so stick around to the end to watch that and then head over to her channel if that's something you're interested in um, all the links to her social media are in the description below she's a really good editor super creative um, very fun person and you'll be seeing a lot more of her in my videos I put out new videos every two weeks on Mondays, and for my patrons, you guys get a snack on the weeks that I don't put out full-length YouTube video. Thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me and making this trip possible. If you'd like to become a patron, my Patreon is patreon.com slash windhippie. And for one-time donations, I have a PayPal, paypal.me slash windhippie. I also have merchandise. All of this is in the description uh, below. Everything is linked if you want to join the merchandise team. Uh, thank you guys for your comments. I love reading them. Thank you, Tish, for helping remind me when I need to edit another video. Uh, this one's coming a bit late sorry tish <laughs> um and that's all stick around for uh the intro to Li olivia's beautiful colorful channel and patrons i'll see you next week youtube friends i'll see you in two weeks <laughs>